This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Actually watched a lot of sports this weekend. Did a lot of laughing this weekend. I don't watch much sports on the weekend. You guys have heard me talking about all these movies I've been watching on the weekend. I was going to say congratulations. Yeah. Well, when I get away from here, I want to get away from here. Like right. we talk, and we're surrounded by sports enough, so my weekends don't usually have much sports in it. Although I do have another awkward hug story for you guys that nice. involves a little bit of sports for this from this weekend. Remind me to get to that at some point uh, because the last time that we had an awkward hug, hug situation, Josh Norman came here to the Clevelander, and I was happy to see him, and I held him in a lingering embrace, and the Clevelander hotel security cameras caught it, and it played all over <laughs> the Internet because uh, all of us were made uncomfortable by how closely I held Josh Norman, including Josh Norman. I've written it down. Okay. As a reminder, awkward hug story. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Got a lot of basketball, a lot of interesting basketball to get to. Russell Westbrook going crazy in a press conference here. Just he hates losing, and he's in a sour mood after losing, and he's doing too much for that team. I love the the irony and the symbolism in a question going to Stephen Adams, and it's a question about Russell Westbrook's teammates not helping him, directed at Stephen Adams. And ball hog Russell Westbrook won't even let Stephen Adams do that for him. Right. Yep. There's a man sitting up there next to you. Let him answer the it's question. A, and it's a fair question, by the way. It's a seven-foot man who looks kind of like a gypsy. What else does he look like? Like a pirate. And I just love that he's uncomfortably fiddling with his hair the entire time that Russell Westbrook is talking. We'll get to that in a second. And we'll get to Steve Kerr in a second because I cannot imagine – how horrible the pain he oh. is suffering for him, for a competitor like him. Steve Kerr, who once got into a fight with teammate Michael Jordan and got punched in the face, he must, how, how bad must the migraines and the nausea be? I wouldn't wish what he's feeling on anybody to not be able to coach because of how poorly he feels as a result of leaking spinal fluid because of a back surgery that he has not taken to, I would not wish whatever it is that hap that is happening in his life not on anybody because I can't imagine how hard that is. But first, let's get into some of the funny things from this weekend because there were a lot of them. So let's go ahead and start the show with Funniest Thing from the Sports Weekend. Hey, people, tell us what in the sport made you laugh hard this weekend. It is a segment we call What Made You Laugh This Weekend. Ha, ha, ha. There's so much to choose from. Uh, amazing weekend. Uh, what do you got, Fats and Info? Paul George's Gatorade commercial. <laughs> yeah. Where he hits a game-winning last-second shot, airing right after he missed a game-winning last-second shot. I mean, and not just missed it. Missed it by a ton. And somehow, somehow, that was not only not the funniest thing from the sports weekend, that wasn't the funniest thing from the last 10 seconds of that game. J.R. Smith, we need to create an app huh. that allows him to live forever. Huh. And just if we have a fountain of youth somewhere, keep him this age forever playing basketball. Contracts in perpetuity. Because who the hell else with the basketball and the season and all you need to do so great. is go into the corner and get fouled. He tries to go behind the back, thus allowing that moment, that magical moment you just described, Fats and Info, never gets to happen if J.R. Smith isn't perpetually J.R. Smith. Never gets to happen. Yep. We all owe him a big thank you, that, man. Let, how about yep. a standing, how about yes, a standing ovation right it. now for J.R. Smith? Thank you, J.R. Thank you, J.R. Thank you, J.R. Thank you, J.R. Thank you, JR. for all the things you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, may he live forever. Yes. Guillermo. I mean, go behind the back Amazing. in that situation. And it would have been a good pass if it hadn't been stolen. Like it, would have, it, was, it would have been a really nice way for them to end Indiana season. That's something you do like game 38 against Detroit on the road regular season. Just so great. <laughs> Only would have been better if he'd been somehow for some reason without anyone noticing shirtless. Like just all of a sudden, hey, is that JR? Is JR shirtless? Guillermo, what do you got? On Saturday night's hockey night in Canada, Don Cherry wore a jacket that looked like he murdered someone. It did. It did. <laughs> that was amazing. It is. A, a jury would convict him of a bloody crime based on just the jacket that he was wearing. Roy, what do you got? 
the Houston Rockets uh, laughing at Andre Robeson's free throws. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so disrespectful. Oh, no. He deserves it, man. <laughs> I mean, Robertson, that was fairly amazing to watch, all of it. I never understand the guy, although J.R. Smith can be the guy, who can make shots from three. Not that he's that great at that either, because he should just wear used to be Cephalosha on the back of his jersey because they're playing four on five or anytime he's out there because he can't shoot threes either. But the guy who can make threes but can't make free throws, it's mystifying to me. It really is. Two of 12, man. Right. They were fouling him on purpose, and if you didn't notice, uh, the Rockets bench was laughing at him uproariously. They were fouling him on purpose for the season, and he just kept missing free throws, and the Rockets bench was couldn't even. There was some guy in a suit laughing who was injured. I don't even know who that was. Uh, what was the funniest thing in the sports weekend for you, Stugatz? Uh, Ray John Rondo, who didn't play for the Bulls, was on the bench wearing a suit, a weird suit with uh, short sleeves. Yeah, purple uh, and lavender. Yep. When he was asked about whether or not he tried to trip Jay Crowder of the Celtics from the bench, he said, I was just stretching. What a great weekend it was when that wasn't even the funniest moment in that game involving Jay Crowder. Robin Lopez, for some reason, started tying Jay Crowder's shoe or untying his shoe because Robin Lopez is a weirdo. They were different games. Rondo happened game three. Lopez happened game four. Okay. What was Robin Lopez doing? He's tangled up with Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder's kind of annoyed. Robin Lopez is kind of annoying. And then uh, and Robin Lopez loses his shoe. And then Robin Lopez decides to just helpfully tie Jay Crowder's shoe or annoy him. I don't even know. I put it up on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Was Robin Lopez trying to help Jay Crowder or annoy, annoy Jay Crowder? There are theories out there that he was trying to untie the shoe. Okay. No, he was. He was trying to untie the shoe because he knew he had to put his shoe back on, and so he wanted to even it out and say, hey, now you have to tie your shoe, so you're not going back to the other end of the court until I go back to the other end of the court. Fine. That's what he was kind of doing. That way's funnier. Yes. I don't, I don't know. I have um, I have a couple. They're, they're, you have to look this up if you have not seen this meme. It is so good. Game three, <laughs> Utah and the Clippers. DeAndre Jordan somehow gets stuck on the perimeter with Gordon Hayward and starts pointing at his head, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. You're locked down. It's at the top of the key. It's one-on-one. Gordon Hayward makes one move. You can hear that DeAndre Jordan needs WD-40 for everything that's creaking in his body, and Gordon Hayward doesn't merely not get locked down. He dunks easily. From the top of the key, isolation, <laughs> and my, you know DeAndre Jordan might as well have slapped the court, you know, like I'm ready. There's no way you get by, by me. But not only did you get by me, you dunked easily. It's, I mean, it, it, it's what it would have looked like if I'd been out there <laughs> telling Gordon Hayward he's locked down. But I liked the moment even better than that. And I don't even know who the participants were in it. It was mixed martial arts. And a guy, and you think baseball's got problems. You got Dustin Pedroia and Manny Machado going at it because baseball doesn't know, um, you know, what is respectful, what's not respectful, and how to. It, it, the Pedroia story is an interesting one. We'll get to it and, and do it in a second. But in mixed martial arts this weekend, a guy knocked out another guy with his elbow, and it was a great knockout. And he went around the ring celebrating, and then. He got in the middle of the octagon and started breakdancing and spun in a way that he punctuated it by being on, resting his head on his arm while staring at the guy who was still knocked out. Wow. It was, you got to look this up. Cool. You got to look this up. First of all, knocked him out with an elbow and then went around the octagon celebrating it, but then spun around breakdancing, and the way the finishing move was to this. land facing him with his head resting on his hand and his elbow on the mat. He also leaves bloody handprints while he's doing it from the other guy's blood. Yeah, well, I don't know whose blood, because his mouth was bleeding too. I don't know whose blood it was, but it was just, I couldn't believe that. He, how many times did he spin, Guillermo? How many times did he end up spinning and, and then nailed the dismount of just still staring at the guy who was still knocked out. 
three complete spins and then the last one perfectly into the, the laying down position. <laughs> Eddie Gordo'd him from Tekken. Uh, watching it right now. <laughs> but the guy is still being tended to. He's still got that, you know, that straight arm. The straight arm of, like, sort of paralysis when you get hit really hard, which is a very serious issue in football. But in MMA, it's just a fun cushion. Woo! <laughs> to find us on a station near you, visit ESPN.com slash ESPN Radio and click the Station Locator tab. Don Lebatard, I know what you like, and I give it to you to make you a junkie so that you're listening. And you can't help yourself on the stuff that I got to force feed you. But I know what you like. And I'll give it to you sparingly just to get you addicted. Stugats. You'll stay right there addicted. And every once in a while, I'll give you smack that you don't like, but that you need. <laughs> it's medicine you need. It's the whole formula. We know what you like. It's why you're addicted. Even though you hate that part of the show. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Golick Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Dan Lebitard Show is brought to you by Upside. Now say big on travel and get a big gift card every trip you buy. You'll love Upside.com. That's Upside.com. None of us nominated just the end to Rockets Thunder oh. as the funniest thing from the sports weekend. The end of basically the Thunder season. Nobody out there seemed to know what they were doing except for Nene. The last 90 seconds of that game. It's crazy, man. Steven Adams executed flawlessly. I've never seen it executed that well. The missed free throw on purpose. Yep. That guy's no good at free throws but is excellent at hitting the rim so that the ball <laughs> bounces right back to him, and then he does what all those teammates do on OKC is miss the shot, get it to Russ. Where is he? <laughs> and Russ was 50 yards behind him. Buried the three. Of course. Yep. Like it was a designed play. It looked like a designed play, and it was the only moment of conf. conf I'm sorry, of competence from the Thunder the last 90 seconds of that game. It seemed like Westbrook was telling him to do it. Well, no. Adams told him before he shot the free throw that he was going to do it. Adams told him before he shot that free throw, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it at the front of the rim. I'm going to get it back, and I'm going to throw it to you. Be ready to take a three from out here. But, Dan, you could do that a 100 more times and never have it executed exactly well, like that. How can that guy be that bad at free throws when he's that good at doing that? How can that guy be 23 years old? <laughs> right? I mean, uh, not to mention that he was a pirate. Yeah. He's already got in his Wikipedia a past as a pirate. Like, that was a long time ago, the age of the pirates. <laughs> so after the game... Maybe he's a vampire. Yeah, give it to yourself. After the game, uh, this question was posed to Stephen Adams. Now, keep in mind, there's a giant man twirling his hair. All right, a giant man who's 23 years old who looks like he's 323 years old because he had that whole age of piracy when he was uh, on a boat pillaging. And Russell Westbrook is sitting next to him. The question is for Stephen Adams. Uh, Guillermo, put that on the poll. Are you shocked that Stephen Adams is 23 years old? Because he doesn't look 23. At Levitar Show on Twitter. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Dell. Learn more at Dell.com slash radio. And so Russell Westbrook decides, Stephen Adams, you never hear from him. You would have, no, if you're listening to this only on the radio and you're not watching on ESPNU, you would have no evidence that Stephen Adams was here. But Stephen Adams is sitting up there twirling his hair, and this is what happens with Russell Westbrook. Steven, second time in three games, uh, you guys really struggled when Russell went to the bench. You were out there for part of that. What goes on when he goes to the bench? Why is Houston so successful? And, and do you sense that, that they sort of get an energy boost just from him going out of the game? Hold on, Steven. <clears throat> I don't want nobody to try to split us up. We all one team. Regardless, if I go to the bench, if Steven was on the floor, if I'm off the floor, we in this together. Don't split us up. Don't try to split us up. Don't try to make us go against each other. Try to make against Russell and the rest of the guys. Russell against Houston. 
I don't I don't want to hear that. We in this together. We playing as a team, and that's all that matters. That's it. Yeah, Russell, I'm not trying to split you up, but twice in three games, you guys have not played well at all when you've gone to the bench. That's fine. We, and say, I'm just say, trying to figure out what's going say, on. Say, Russell, you ain't played well at all. Say, Russell and the team is, haven't played well. Don't say when Russell goes out, the team don't play well. It don't matter. We in this together. That may that may be, Russell, but I've asked Stephen a question. Cool. And it's, it's a legitimate question. you. Next question. It's a legitimate question. Next question. Next question. Well, Next question. No, I think we won't keep the microphone. I had a question for Ste I had a question for Stephen, and it, it wasn't answered. And I don't understand if Stephen wants to say he still hasn't said anything. If he wants to say I don't want to answer that, fine. But. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Whose side, John? Russell's or the reporters? Because people hate the media, right? And Russell is spouting a nice message there. Don't try to split us up. But man, that was a benign question. It was. Do you sense that Houston? Gets more energy when you when Russ goes to the bench. Not only is it a benign question, not only is it a fair question. To me, it's a good question. Very good question. It's the rare good question in one of those settings. But I also run things through the emotional prism of being the reporter. Right. I mean, we get it. Your team guy. It was a terrible job by Russ. A terrible job. A good question by the reporter. Terrible job of handling it by Russell Westbrook. There's a grown man sitting next to you. Let him answer the question. Okay, but you were also looking at this through the emotional bias of being the guy in the crowd asking the question. So we have a bias. I'm guessing most people are going to side with Russ on this. I'm guessing that they will... Like the message that he's giving of don't try to split us up, and it stops being about the actual question and answer and just about how much you hate the media. In general, how much you hate what it is that we do. Because he wasn't trying to split anybody up. No. Can you sense that Houston, Houston the last couple of games goes crazy whenever Westbrook goes to the bench? Yep. Can you sense that Houston, hell, it's the only time, Cantor only plays in the series when Harden goes to rest. They, it's so funny the way they do that. The moment Harden goes in, if Cantor's around, they pull him out. The moment Harden goes out, Cantor comes in. So why wouldn't there be some sort of strategic differences on the other side when Russell Westbrook goes out? Well, Westbrook was clearly using that platform to be a, a leader and, and take one for his team. But when he got press on it, it didn't really make much sense after that. But it sort of reminded me of what Durant did last year, where Durant... Were, was up there on the podium with Westbrook, and they were talking to him about the, the Mark Cuban comments about how he's not a superstar, and he put an arm out holding Russell Westbrook back, and he's like, no, Cuban's an idiot, Cuban's an idiot. Yes, it was, he sim learned. Right. It was similar that way, except that the question about Mark Cuban wasn't a benign one. This right. one was. It was. This wasn't, hey, I'm trying to split your team up. This was, Russ, Russell Westbrook took that question wrong. How about Steven Adams also, be a man and say, no, Russ, I got it. Okay, I got it. The question was asked at me. You're going to tell. Well, you're, yeah, I'm going to tell, tell Stephen Adams how to be a man. You're going to yes. tell that guy how to be a man. Yeah, I when am. You are so, you are the size of something he finds in his belly button. You're going to tell him how to be a man. He's a bleeping pirate. Payday! Payday! He's got a <laughs> past that involves pillaging. Vampire. Don Lebatard. Is Steven Adams the only guy in the league going with a still... Is he still rocking the single gold tooth? Stugatz. Is there anyone else in the league still rocking the single gold tooth? Which, by the way, is just tremendous. I might start doing that. I love the single gold tooth. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Choose Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline for the best total engine protection you can get. Tune in tonight as Damian Lillard and the Blazers host Steph Curry and the Warriors. Coverage begins at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Here's your Sports Center update. Two late games yesterday in the NBA playoffs. Celtics over the Bulls, 104-95. Series moves back to Boston, tied at two games apiece. The Jazz even up their series with the Clippers at two games apiece with a 105-98 victory in Game 4. Series goes back to L.A. for Game 5 on Tuesday. Three more games tonight. Bucks and Raptors at 7 Eastern. Series tied at 2. Wizards and Hawks at 8. Washington with a 2-1 series lead. Warriors and Blazers. Warriors up 3 to nothing. Tip-off set for 10.30 p.m. Eastern. And finally... 
Kenny G made good on a promise and treated passengers on a Delta Airlines flight to a private concert after the passengers helped the in-flight crew reach its goal of raising $2,000 for Relay for Life. Mother's Day is coming up, and Pandora Jewelry can help you find the perfect gift. Shop rings, bangles, charms, earrings, or necklaces at Pandora Jewelry. You can give your mom something meant just for her. Do celebrate this Mother's Day and shop Pandora Jewelry right now. For all the latest headlines and information, tune to the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I saw a lot of people complaining because Kenny G is an easy punchline. A lot of people who saw that news about Kenny G playing a private concert on, you say it was a Delta flight? Yep. A lot of people complaining, I would have jumped off the plane if it had been me. I wouldn't want a Kenny G concert while I was flying. Our show has a different relationship with Kenny G because he spent five days with us during the Super Bowl making amazing radio. And he doesn't take himself very seriously, which we like. But put it up on the poll at Levitard Show. Would you want that? Yes or no? Because Kenny G, a lot of people like to make fun of Kenny G. And his music. And a lot of people were making fun, making the easy joke of, if Kenny G were doing that on my flight, right. I would be mad about that. I'll be honest, though. Kenny G was a guy I used to make fun of until he joined us Super Bowl week. Like I, So I understand people. If you, We've gotten to know Kenny G, as you pointed out, in a really cool way because he spent the entire week with us. But I used to make fun of him. But I'm not sure, though, if I were on a flight, I'd want music I don't like being played by somebody. Even if it's a good story? Because... I mean, Kenny G playing music on your flight, regardless of whether or not you're a fan. That's a cool story. It's a cross-country flight. Kenny G concert. Awesome. It's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, but not if you don't like the music. If you don't well, like the put music. Put your headphones be- on. I, mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's the saxophone. It's, right. it's relaxing on an you airplane. Take your phone out yeah. and take a video. Turn yeah. it over to your face. Go, oh, I can't believe this. It's fame. Is that what you said? Yeah. Fame. Yeah, okay. Khloe Kardashian could be playing a concert. I'm going to take my phone out and say, whoa! No doubt. Uh, okay, I, I, are you annoyed by that, too? Put that on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Are you annoyed uh, with all the people who are at a concert uh, feeling the need to show you that they're at a concert instead of enjoying the concert? Yes or no? I do it all the time. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a video or some pictures from a concert. No, it's just the number of people doing it. I tend to... Get a little bothered. By I mean, the- what's the point of going if no one knows you're there? Right, exactly. Like, I'm going to the dead at Wrigley Field this summer, uh, you know, first week of July, and I'm going to snap away. And I'm going to take video after video, and I'm going to tweet them out because I want people to know that I'm there. Otherwise, what's the point of going? Snap away? What are you going to do? A day? You're going to do a Polaroid camera? Like, what are you talking <laughs> about, snap away? You're not talking about Snapchat. You're not on Snapchat. How do you know? Because you don't know how to use the most basic things on your phone. That's how I know. (laughs) You're not on Snapchat. I'm going to snap away. That's a bit of a red flag. I like Snapchat, man. I mean, I've you know i checked it out. My daughters are on it constantly, and I think I'm going to start using it. I do. Uh, Dan Wetzel is going to join us in 45 minutes. He's doing a documentary on Aaron Hernandez. He was one of the few people actually covering the Aaron Hernandez trial every day. So we're going to get to that in a little bit. Do the Warriors need Steve Kerr? Because no. I've they're forty and four without Steve Kerr. They okay. are forty and four without. No, they don't need Steve Kerr. I feel terrible about what Steve Kerr is going through, but no, they don't need Steve Kerr. You asked the question, I answered it. Okay, I didn't want you to elaborate. The quick answer to that is no, they don't need him. Forty and four. That means they'd be. Uh, think for a second. Over eighty games. 79 and 5, maybe? It's a 90 winning percentage. Oh. 900 winning percentage. I mean, 80 and 8, I think. 82 games in a season, of course. Right, 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 right. You're, all right, let's just sit around. They don't need him. Okay, no, but since he wanted to get, let's let's listen to Stu God's do math. Since he wanted to get in there real quick there before I actually sort of 44. finished what I was thinking, let's just listen to Stu God's doing four. math for the, um, for the rest of the segment. Let's just see where this ends and four, up. 40 that's, that's 40 and 4. So that's 44 games. There's 82 in a season. So they'd be right around, let's see. Hold on, let me write this down. So they'd be right around like, you know, like a 76-win team, I feel like. Somewhere in that neighborhood. A little lower? 
70, a 74 win team, 74, 74 and 8, perhaps, something like that. Remember to carry the four. Just go to commercial. Nothing in life is free. Time for some ads. I don't even need to rant. I was trying to get off the ground for people who were just joining us. What was happening with Steve Kerr? Uh, they know. Don Lebatard. If it's 3% on $100 million, that's that's three hundred. Three hundred thousand dollars on one hundred and twenty. It's three sixty. Stugatz. Three percent of a hundred million is three million. Stugatz. Oh my bad. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. I'm not interested in the NFL draft in any way. I'm certainly not interested in any of the big boards or any of that stuff. The the two point ohs, three point ohs, mock drafts. But I want to ask you this question. Warren Sapp says that Miles Garrett, when he sees him on tape. He just sees a lazy kid who makes four plays a game and that he is baffled by the idea of Miles Garrett being a number one pick. And what I wanted to ask you is, is there any other former player willing to say things like that? Who else well, does things like that? Warren Sapp is not in broadcasting right now. Sure. He's very colorful. He's very opinionated, but he's had a series of off-the-field issues that have kept him now out of broadcasting. I mean, Booger McFarland, who was also a former player, has said it on, on this network. He said the same thing. He doesn't think he's the number one overall pick. No, but that. not that he's Maybe not, Barkley? Not that he's not a number one pick. Yeah, that's what makes Barkley Barkley. Yeah. But that he, all he sees is a lazy kid who makes four plays a game. Right. Not a lot of former players do that to the fraternity. No, they don't. They're usually promoting, right? Promoting the fraternity. Because to say that someone doesn't shouldn't be a number one pick, that's not as slicing as lazy kid who makes four plays a game. Correct. And Warren Sapp's always been willing to do stuff like that. But what makes Barkley Barkley is that he's one of the few who's willing to give opinions like that and not even he does that to individual players, does he? Does Charles Barkley very often go after someone, someone stinks at basketball? No. Like he'll go after a team or he'll go after the league or he'll say something is um, is not good, but does he do that where he says, um, says you know, player X is no good? I'm not sure. Shaq does. Yeah, Shaq and JaVale. Shaq does it all the thing, time, obviously. yeah. Not just JaVale. I've heard no, Shaq no, say he it about other guys. Howard too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he hates Dwight. What Shaq hates is big men who don't play like him, which is all of them. <laughs> yeah, but the but the Dwight thing, especially the Dwight thing, it always needles him because he took the Superman thing. He went from Orlando to Los Angeles. He was trying to be the next Shaq. What is Shaq going to realize that that he's a once in a generation center? What, like no one you, plays you, like you that. You would think <laughs> that walking around daily, being someone who is so much more giant than everyone else in the world. Except for Yao Ming, would make you come to the realization, Shaq, no one else can play with your style of basketball <laughs> because no one else was 350 pounds and stronger than everyone else. In fact, I think something that we always lose sight of when it comes to LeBron James is the size of that human being who could put a shoulder into Paul George, and Paul George can't do anything yeah. other than lose. I, the thing that... LeBron never has the game that Paul George had yesterday because he can always go get 20 points right at the rim where he's not going to miss any shots. That guy just had – this is this is LeBron in the first round. 32-9-9 nine, nine on 54% shooting, and the stunning one is 45% from three. Amazing. Really just amazing. He just – he never has the game that Harden had yesterday where he's going 0 for 7 from – from three, right. he never has one of these games where he's just super inefficient. The George game you're talking about is 5 of 21. He was 5 of 21. When does LeBron ever have the 5 for 21 game? He, he did Last year, he had some difficulties with his jump shot that he doesn't seem to be having right now. But I, I just think we lose sight of how much stronger he is 
physically he, stronger than everyone else he's playing against. He had a he had a nine of twenty four last year in the finals, um, which isn't. I mean, it's thirty seven percent, which is not LeBron like, but he still had eleven rebounds, eleven assists, three blocks, two steals, and they won the game. Well, to be to be fair, when uh, Kyrie and Love were out. And he was playing in the finals. That's how he was playing. He was playing the Russell Westbrook style. He was. He had a number of inefficient games. Oh, if I go back two years, yeah, ago the, to finals, the finals. Yeah, yeah the finals yeah. before that, he had a number of inefficient games where he was shooting thirty-two times and you know making fourteen of them. He had. I mean, he shot thirty-nine percent from the field in that series. Right. So he had uh-huh. a seven of twenty-two. He had eleven of thirty-five. He had an eighteen of thirty-eight. Yeah, that's stupid like that. for me to say. Actually, to say when do you ever see LeBron do that? When it was a couple of finals ago that you saw him do it, and he's done it a couple of times in the finals because when he was with Dwayne Wade in the Heat, he didn't know you know, where where the hell he was. Yeah, that's three season. for 11 game in the NBA Finals. I think it was game four. Yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, he goes 13-33 to 33 in the finals, and he still had 18 rebounds, nine assists, two steals. I mean, I mean, but it seems, <laughs> it seems wrong to even do the math on that entire series because Kyrie and Love were out, and he was just playing. It was weird to even watch him play that way because you're so used to him playing – efficiently. Stugat is going to do his weekend observations here in about 10 minutes. It's a fairly amazing thing to say, though, that the Warriors aren't going to miss their coach, isn't it? That Mike Brown is going to, that Mike Brown might win the championship this year and probably should. Is it amazing that with that roster, that roster, but it is amazing because it, it's totally minimizing. You're saying anyone can do it. You're saying, I am. You're saying any- anyone is doing it, Mike Brown. Well, I mean, Steve Kerr is also anyone. He didn't have any coaching experience, and he's doing it. But I, I, he's I mean, done it actually. Look, man, you don't need to explain this to me. I'm the one who's always telling you we over worship coaches in this country. But if they win the championship, aren't we saying? And it's not Mike Brown. It could be anybody. Oh, I think any coach in the NBA could coach this team, and they'd win a title. Fred Hoiberg, put this up on the poll, Guillermo, at Lebetard Show. Do the Warriors win the championship if Fred Hoiberg is their coach? <laughs> yes. Isn't he considered right now in the NBA? Who was the guy who coached the Wizards last year who didn't know how which end of, Randy the, Whitman. Uh, <laughs> of the chalkboard was up? Randy Whitman. Put that up on the poll. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.